I think I got sentenced January 26, 2009. And I was gone for about nine months to truck driving school. Ah, prison. As far as a dad, like a father figure, that's something that I never had before. I've never been able to, I guess you could say, like really trust them in. I got a good mom and all that, but like, I ain't never had no dad. My dad never even bought me a pair of shoes before. I want to be just like my big brother, so I looked up to him. When I seen him, like he was selling drugs and all that, and he got money fast off that. I just, I ain't had nobody else to look up to. And when he died, I just was like, I'm, I'm tired of that, so. And I'm not, and I'm not trying to be in jail my whole life. So I'm just uh, trying to do something positive. Everybody calls me Pops. That's someone that, that you can trust. That's someone that you can depend on. That's someone that you can lean on. That's someone who is a, a secret keeper. So, when the young people do call me pops and they come to me with their problems or whatever going on with their life, it's a serious badge of honor. And so every day I try to uphold that badge of honor by being the best pop father I can possibly be. I remember when I first met Riley, he kept telling me, I got your back, I got your back. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. But once I like, realize like this man got my back it's i wish every girl could have that because it's like your dad has to be your first love if you want to know how to like love a man or love somebody the right way your dad has to be your first love and my dad is my first love yeah he told me i know you didn't have a dad like growing up and he said uh i'm gonna be your dad and i ain't gonna lie like I almost start tearing up, cause like I ain't like you know I'm I'm a dude, but I ain't saying I want a dad, but I love to have one, cause I when I have a problem with something, or I'm going through something, I can't really go to nobody like that. That's who they are. He was like, your dad passed, you my daughter. I'm like, bet. She said, your mama not here, I'm your mama. Bet. So and I respect them just as that they gave birth to me. Raleigh, he had a program that really didn't even exist where he let kids come in and sweep and he give them donations. It was like a rescue. It's a place of safety and refuge for them. And so we continued doing it and bringing kids in and letting them fold towels, sweep, shampoo, teaching them like basic techniques of cutting hair, all these things and it was just it was growing with them. So we just made it legit and got our 501c3 and started over for outreach, which we had the mannequin house, um, sweepers program, and all that good stuff. It Overflow is sort of like, it's an unofficial, official country club. You work a 40 hour week, you come up here, you know, you're gonna get the latest news, you're gonna do a little gossip, and you're gonna do a little barbecuing out front, get a haircut and just kind of like wind down amongst family and friends. Being military, everywhere I go, I never really have any relatives. And so Overflow became like a, an extended family for me. With all of our kids, regardless of what they're going through, if they're single parent, if they got mom and dad at the house or whatever, we are bringing in love, to love our kids and our community, to show them a better way, not just with entrepreneurship, but being a good citizen a good humanitarian. Show somebody else that same love and that respect that you would want somebody to show you at all times, because we're not promised tomorrow. If, if we don't teach them great work ethics, then the street is gonna teach them something else. And see, they can be here and they can be working, they can be learning a skill, they can be doing their homework. We just want you to be a productive member of society. It's kind of like clay on a potter's wheel, where we can mold them and shape them, and shape them into being the young men and women that will be proud of who they are in society. And I tell them all the time, you're gonna be very successful. You gotta make sure that you come here like you're supposed to on time, stop making all those excuses, pull your pants up, 
get rid of the attitude, those type of things. But reel them in back with love. You're going to be very successful. Son, I see it. You got this. You just have to figure out that combination. And then once you figure out that combination and it let you in, it's amazing when they let you in because they're so talented. It's just they have to be redirected and refocus on something else. And once you once you become that person that can help them redirect and refocus, it just makes you so proud of a father. You just want to beat your chest like King Kong because you know that you put something in them and when they leave you, they're going to be all right. I watch them and then I kind of like, okay, this is, this is what I can do. This is my gift. Now I know why I'm here. I'm here for teenagers. I'm here because I can handle it and they probably can't. I love them kids because they just remind me of myself, so yeah. Like, I, I appreciate everything they do for me. Like, I feel like a whole new person and I ain't even been here that long. I feel like brand new. They really helped me change my life.